I mean, uh, and gee, Tom, don't you think, like, you're going to do another read video? Haven't you had enough of that? I mean, nobody wants to see another read video. Why are you doing that? Well, the reason we're doing it is because we really haven't completed our task. Your task? What do you mean? I mean, you finished reads and you've talked the legs off an iron pot. I mean, what else could you be doing? Well, one of the most important things, as I keep saying, is that it's very important in order to work on reads properly. You have to learn how to test them properly. And so that's what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to be talking about how to retest the reads as you're going through the process. So I'm going to be talking about the thinking process, why I'm testing and what I'm testing, and then you can see the results of that. Well, I guess that's okay. I mean, I guess you really haven't done that, have you? No, I haven't. So why don't you just shut up so we can continue and we can actually go through this video and see if what I'm doing is beneficial to help other people finish reads. Okay, all right, whatever you say. I guess you're the boss. So here's the read we're going to be testing right now. And um, uh, this is sort of closer to my mouthpiece, so it's mainly balanced. We're not going to worry about removing material off the middle of the read. Here, the left side dead, really dead. And the right side's hard, a little harder, but not, doesn't really ring in response, it just rings better in comparison to the left. So, um, first thing, let's just, uh, let's just do our tip finishing. So uh, let me get up closer here, and we're just going to I'm put a little more pressure on the left side of the tip of the finishing block because it's so much harder. And start right about here. Okay, so now let's test this again. it's still dead on the left side. So we're going to get the left side down here to ring more and uh, that's going to improve the read, improve the side to side balance. So here we go pushing down and I'm putting weight on the edge of this tool and push weight up and on my index finger so, so I'm getting some of the material off there on the left side. It's already looking better. Let's see if it sounds better. Hope so. So. Right here. Okay, that's better still, and we're getting closer. Now the way I see the tip here is I'm going to do a little of the corner finishing. I think that's finishing techniques five and six because the reed is really quite hard over here. Let's see if we can get it to flex a little bit better. That's marginally better but no need to be hasty impatience is the reason most people ruin their reads even after they know what they're doing okay well that's 
better and now the right side seems to not quite be ringing as well as the left in a certain respect. So now I want to go to my little finishing tool right here and um, and I just want to blend the upper third of the reed to the lower to the upper middle of the reed to the upper third you got the lower third middle third upper third we're going to do um, blending the upper part of the middle third into the lower part of the top third just to try to get a little more flex a little more ring and um, and I'm only removing material as I go forward right and I'm holding the tool fairly flat to the surface there we go to get the read on properly. Now the left side's a little, still a little hard in relationship to the right, but they're much closer together than when we started. Okay. Not bad. Not good either. G is pretty good uh, with the side to side still a little heavy on the left but now we're going to do a few more tests with uh, this side to side of what I call the dynamic response test because I want to see how the reed rings okay, it's still dead on the left I'm just going to move the reed just a, slightly to the right very slight Now that's how it rings on the right side. And here it is much deader on the left side when you're testing the D. Now, um, so we're still using the same test to see how the reed rings in different parts of the pitch range. Very important. Okay. Still ringing nice on the right. You can just dead on the left side when you play the clarion D and then that's the right. So the left side on the high D doesn't want to respond. So if I try to slur, I can't make the D speak without biting, without closing, and I don't want to do that. Unbalanced reads will force you to do stuff like that. Bad, bad. Okay, and now... Let's see if we can't get some improvement here. I'm going to be working right back here, right behind the tip. Try to avoid going over the tip because if you go over the tip, you, know, you can end up like 
kind of messing things up at the tip. You want the back part of the reed here to be to have some flex, but you don't want to soften up the very tip because then you get little whistles and squeaks and all like there's a little mouse in your clarinet. Not that I've got anything against mice. Yeah, that's very hard there on the left side. See, that's what the manufacturer's machines, when they're not adjusted right, that's what they do. It's not bad cane. It's a bad cut usually. Get a little, a little more off. Now I'm going to do the corner tip finishing here. Again, the real area is, yeah. Use a little smaller piece now. And the real area is right back here. Those stiff fibers, they don't want to respond. That's why the high D didn't speak. All right, again, I'm only removing material. Oh man, when I, when I push and I, I'm working on the reed wet. that work right behind the tip did some improvements so let's see they were getting good ring on both sides on the G the reson the resonance decay test I'm sorry I got my parchment paper is making me sound like I have a list which I don't um, but uh, the the um, the uh, let me just move this a little bit just to say the object is to play the reed course straight up as possible, but removing that material behind the tip really helped a lot. Now let's see what our D is like. Feel much better, not perfect yet. Not not that there's anything wrong with perfect. Now you can hear the D, the high D, actually speaks now without me doing much change. But we're still not ideal here, uh, especially for the D. Um, uh, especially for the D on the staff. So we're going to work this guy just a little bit generally this way. Which you always want to be careful at the tip, but these uh, tools, this method, makes it easy. You don't even have to be skilled. You can be a klutz like me, and still, the real secret then is not the difficulty of finishing with my system. The difficulty 
is the difficulty that's common to all systems, and that is knowing what you're doing when you're testing. So now we got that equal ring. Almost perfect. Still, it's a little, I can feel the reed twisting a little bit in my air. The air is not like reed just going through. And uh, that's going to, that's going to result in some response issues. And I can see a little bit of hardness when I flex the reed with this like really terrific little lamp that I've got right here that's in the way of the video. Okay. And so now I'm going to see. If I just can't, because the, the twisting feels like it's somewhere right back in this area behind the tip. What I was saying it's not quite perfect on the isolated test. You see that in a bigger way when I began playing that passage because I could feel the reed twisting all the way. Is this slight? Yes, not any, anything like it was at the beginning, but it's still bad. Now my dynamic response to this is better. Again, still not perfect. Yet. Careful testing is the thing that really makes the difference. See, most single lip players, they, they don't have enough uh, sensitivity in their, in their tone production to be able to even do this. Then you need to develop your own tests. Passages that you always test for sensitive dynamic sensitive dynamic control.
better. Oh. Still recording. That's good. Now I just want to do a kind of general general test and I want to use some real light this is very light abrasive right here and uh, so it's, it's really mainly it's polishing not uh, really removing a lot of material I can still see some inequities up there in the left uh, so the way this breed's been I mean basically ruined because uh, it was in very bad shape. If you remember, uh, the way it's been ruined, it's uh, probably been nothing, not a concert read, but a, a, just a good practice read. So it's better, it's a lot better, and like I said, uh, probably not a concert read. Uh, more than likely, uh, got the stuff out of my mouth, more than likely it's going to be uh, maybe, you know, a decent practice read. I think think maybe a decent practice read, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so that's it. This gives you an idea of the kind of sensitive testing that you need to do in order to uh, in order to uh, really effectively uh, use these tools. You see, because your testing is your diagnosis, and your tools that's your operating. This is your scalpel and your suture or whatever they call those things on uh, those uh, afternoon doctor programs. I'm not sure uh, what they do, but anyway. Uh, these are your operating tools, and uh, right up here, that's your diagnostic equipment. And the, as I always say, the better you test, the less you guess. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm instead of looking at the camera, I'm always kind of looking at that in the video. Uh, a lot of times I'm looking over, I've got my monitor over here. And a lot of times I'm looking at the monitor trying to see if anything's gone wrong with the recording because uh, I actually made three attempts at getting this video done before I got this video done. But I hope it's beneficial to you. Uh, you can see at least it's kind of behind the scenes what's going on in my head as I'm working on the reads, what I'm trying to do, um, what my testing actually tells me, which is it's my diagnosis, and then uh, it's going to dictate what I'm going to be doing in the operating room, so to speak. And uh, as you can hear, I, uh, I did improve the read, and I can do so predictably using these means and methods. The side-to-side -side test, which is what people mostly call it, what I call it is the dynamic range response test, because it tests a forte piano Forte, Sforzati, down to a pianissimo. And uh, so when you test different pitches in different areas of the clarinet, like the, the, you know, the high D or the open G or the D on the staff, 
essentially what you're doing uh, is you're testing how each of these pitches in these different parts of the clarinet's range, how each of them is responding in terms of its abil your ability to easily do a sforzati and ring down to a piano. If a note, like for instance, the high D didn't even speak, but uh, in one of the tests, uh, when I was doing the D, the D sounded fine when I was playing and the right side of the reed was ringing. The open G was good, right? But then I tried the D, it was fine on the right side. Then when I tried it on the left side, because of the longer pipe, then you see the inequity in the reed's response. So the D would ring on the right, dead on the left. Not totally dead, but deader. So I would know that I'm going to have to go a little further down and blend the middle, the top of the middle third into the into the bottom of the top third, that is the tip third of the reed, in order to get some better ring and response in those long pipe notes. And they improved. They improved. So that's my method, uh, and I'm sticking to it, uh, the testing those Ds, um, uh, the high D, uh, and then uh, the clarion D. You can also test the bell B that way. It's a good test. It's the most difficult test. So I think if you get the Ds good, the Bs are going to be pretty good. Uh, the open G, that's the most elementary test to play the bong. And you don't try to you don't force the reed to ring down. You have to see how the, the ears actually ring. Hit them with the air and just let the air taper. And the reed's going to do what it's going to do. That way, you can tell which side of the reed is actually better than the other. And then it'll also tell you what you need to do with your scalpel.